Good morning. Um, I'm feeling better. My voice is I'm getting there. Yay. <clears throat> so hopefully I won't have a, a, too many coughing fits. I appreciate y'all, anybody who is tuning in, um, you know, appreciate you putting up with <laughs> that. Um, and anyway, um, and all the well wishes for me getting better. I pre I received them and they're, it's helping. So encouraging, getting encouragement is always so good. Giving and getting it. Um, and we got the train blowing this morning. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I live right by a railroad track too. That's what our little town is very famous for. Um, anyway, Song of Songs, Song of Solomon. Ah, I should know the name of the book. I was just reading. And, and it's a very famous book of the Bible all about um, intimacy. And maybe even tomorrow we'll get more into that. Um, but today, a couple of the verses that really caught my attention were, um, you know, he was describing like just with one glance of your eyes, you've, you've got me. And I'm like, Ooh, don't we get each other that way? Um, nonverbal communication. And that's what the importance of what we're going to talk to talk about today, because Boy, before I learned to, um, or I haven't learned, I am in the process of learning to actually use words, that the words come out of my mouth align with what's internal. I was a, like the master <laughs> of nonverbal communication. <laughs> and we do need to be masters of it, like, because it matters. Like we, we talk to each other in more ways than just words, right? Um, for good or for better. And we're pack animals. We're pack, you know, we're, we're made for connection. But at the same time, we have these individual bodies that are in brains that are wired for survival. This is really an interesting dynamic and attention that we're always living in. It's like, I've got to protect myself, but part of protecting myself is being a part of this pack. And I've identified myself with this pack. And now maybe something is happening inside the pack and you're getting some messages. Um, maybe even non-verbally like, hey, you better get back in line here. And we're reading, so we're not always just listening to each other. We're, you know, we're watching, we're catching up on the nuances and uh, staying in tune with what's really going on with so much more than our intellectual thoughts and words. Um, and a lot of times that stuff does not line up. And like, we know it. And then we're trying to figure out like, okay, what's, what's happening here, people. And this isn't just between couples. This is between parents and kids and kids and other kids on the playground. Like it's the game, literally the game we play of life. Like trying to kind of figure each other out and how we fit in, how we can fit in. Do I belong here? Should I go somewhere else? what'll happen if I do like, like, well, this is how we kind of keep each other in line. A lot of times it's not always with words. <laughs> it's with our glances, with our, I think I was really good at what I have to say this without cursing, resting brat face. <laughs> like I, as a nine who was really unhealthy at one point and totally like operating from disintegration, not, not alignment, um, and was totally didn't want any kind of confrontation, was threatened by it. But I was also being kind of threatened, or at least I thought I was by other people. And so I, this is how I would communicate. Like I did a lot of nonverbal communication and then my husband or my kids or somebody would call me on it. And I would be like, what? I didn't say anything. Like, what are you talking about? 
I, you know, I would rest. I would drive that sword <laughs> in the ground like, but I didn't say anything. You can't accuse me of, you know, that because I didn't actually say anything. Mm, yeah, oh yeah. We had a lot of roundabouts in our house about <laughs> nonverbal communication. <laughs> And I was a master at it. And I was a master at deflecting and denying it too. Oh gosh, this is hard. This is like vulnerable stuff to admit y'all. But I know you're in the same boat with me because you're human. And if you're not that person, then you're the other person that is able to speak truth more comfortably. And you're dealing with somebody who can't. <laughs> and they're like, they really want to because they've, Obviously, it's coming through, but they are afraid. They're afraid. This is a this is a fear tactic and a defense tactic. It's like, if I admit this to you, I am going to, something bad is going to happen. So, but, also known as passive aggressiveness, um, we can c communicate this way. Okay, so I've talked about maybe some of the negative aspects of nonverbal communication. And did you all know part of part of why we can do this with people? I'm sure it's it's part of a survival thing that God has wired us for. But you know how I've talked about like our we do have this thing called a brain that's in our skull, but it's connected to our nervous system, our gut. Like we've got a whole like mind that's happening that is not just in here. It's a whole communication system. And in the West, we like to chop people up into body parts and kind of isolate them. And so we've kind of lost touch, literally, um, with that a lot in the West, I think, or at least as I can see it, because I grew up here. But, um, and our your heart actually has a three foot electromagnetic field and now in the world of zoom though we're not like in in person with people so we're really having to tune in literally tune in a lot of us like to turn our screens off so you can't see you know me maybe make a face or like what or not paying attention or like like because we know other people <laughs> We like to people watch. This is part of, part of why we like to people watch. We like to like, what's happening in your world? And there's a lot that we can tell just by looking and observing body language, nonverbal communication and cues. And this is important. This is important stuff. Um, now, a lot of times we like to also be mind readers and jump to conclusions and then we'll misinterpret people's um, body language and think that we know because we've got maybe some evidence of, well, the last three people I saw that made a face like that, I was right. But then you encounter the fourth person and they're like, what are you talking about? And, and they seem innocent, but you're like, boy, I know. I know what that face looks like. I know what that face means. And maybe they are trying to hold in some gas. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. You really don't know. But a lot of people walk around thinking they know. This was totally the dynamic in our house. My husband probably had enough evidence. And he, conversely too, I would call him on a lot of his nonverbal communication. There's a lot of biting of the lips that happen or eyes my dad was the master of this this is probably where it started with me and it probably started with you too you were trained as a child in your house and whatever language your family of origin used and signals and cues where you knew things were good things were about to hit the proverbial fan you know what i'm talking about <laughs> And then you carry that out with you. And then you're talking to other people, talking, I mean, you know, at least all this nonverbal communication, where when you interpret the biting of the lip or the wide eyes, that might have meant something totally different in their household. Or they used other, and then we're all like, just bumper cars, just bumping into each other. A pastor once, 
um, used the uh, analogy of a garbage truck. Like we're all just garbage trucks, just kind of bumping and careening into each other and we spill our garbage out onto other people. <coughs> and um, Brene Brown, you know, I've talked about her a lot. I really like her. She's a pretty wise woman and she's backed it up with um, a lot of research. And she particularly spends a lot of times in some of these more uncomfortable emotions, vulnerability being one of them. And when you can be vulnerable and be, which also includes just gut, complete honesty and transparency, then you stop kind of playing some of these games where you're sending mixed signals. That's what happens with most of us. And the problem and the importance of nonverbal communication. Well, a lot of us, because we're not being honest, things are, we're communicating what we really feel. And then the words aren't lining up or the actions or whatever. And we are, we're getting into some relational trouble. <laughs> and sometimes even with ourselves, this is not limited to just communicating with other people. It's with, with ourselves. We're ignoring our own signals, our own intuition, you know, maybe staying in a situation when your body is like, get the heck out of here. And you're like, no, like, well, whatever it is, um, we're, there's a lot of mixed signals happening. And when you can start to slow down, realize that this is happening, start in, I think you really do have to start with yourself and start to get to know yourself, your own signals, paying attention to what's happening, learn about your particular personality, how it developed, the stories and beliefs that you were raised with, where all that conditioning and stuff, garbage came from, and start to deal with it, because then you can start to deal more honestly and vulnerably with other people. You start to build trust with yourself, and then some of that nonsense will start to go away, or you'll at least start to really be able to go, oh, I see what happened there. And you can even start to own your part of it, like down to like, get into the weeds of like, well, yes, I did do exactly this, but it wasn't all me because then that triggered this and you and your garbage. And then you, so you would need to still own your garbage because you don't want to own too much. Um, but it really moved me out of the place of being, it, wait a minute, I shouldn't put that in past tense. It's in progress. It's very much in progress. But I've made quite a bit of progress. And my relationships are bearing fruit for, of that. Um, and it takes a while, though, too. When you start to do this kind of work with your nonverbal communication and really tapping into your own wisdom and starting to get aligned and integrated, have integrity within yourself. And then it starts to change how you deal with other people. All those people that are used to you dealing this way with them are kind of like, wait a minute, what's happening? You're stepping on my toes now, or we're not, this interaction isn't the way it usually is. Um, and then, you know, it might get messy for a while, or you might Find that some relationships or seasons in your life, if you employment, like whatever it is, maybe it's just not a good fit and you've been just, you know, trying to make it work. And but it's still coming out. So it starts with the self, I believe. This is my my humble opinion. Because really that's the only thing that we can control. And really nonverbal communication tells us that even with ourselves, we don't have full control. We've got to, like, there's an autonomic nervous system. There's an autopilot that does come in and take control. Um, and so it's never, um, 
and you can teach it new programming and you can learn to do new things, but you're never 100% in control. Like it takes a lot of effort. You know, we got manual steering on this baby. It's not, you know, um, it takes effort and work. And a lot of people, you know, don't like doing this kind of stuff. And, and so that's also part of what we're dealing with. Like we've got people that are just on autopilot and in survival mode and are complete train wrecks. And we, if we're doing our work, we're trying to then expect the same thing in return. And we've got to remind ourselves, hey, wait a minute, they're not doing their work. Maybe I need to really adjust my expectations so that then my my nonverbal communications can be more appropriate for the situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can switch, because that will also switch you out of What's wrong with this idiot to, oh, oh, I used to be like you. Oh, yeah, I, it's hard. It switched you from anger to compassion. And that's a much better and generous place to live. Um, not only with yourself, but with others. And you can kind of see what's going on. That's part of even, it's kind of neat that this is on the he the heels of wisdom. <laughs> <coughs> in the Psalms because there is wisdom and there's a lot of wisdom in body language. When we learn how to tune into it with ourselves, then act with alignment because that's a lot of what crazy making is, or maybe that's not the right word to use, but when you feel out of control, crazed is you you're ignoring what's happening in your body and you're ignoring your gut and then you're doing things that are counter to your own beliefs, your own safety maybe. Um, and you, your mind knows all this and you're like, wait a minute, what? And you're living with mixed signals. Oftentimes we refer to this as um, in, the, in the you know field of psychology, this is referred to as cognitive dissonance. You know, you're divided. You fit, that's crazy making stuff. <laughs> And this is part of what's happening. You're ignoring and you're not going back and even relearning. Where did all this come from? Why am I doing this? Why am I feeling this way? And, and then starting to really deal with it and get things back into alignment and back together. And then learning in a new way how to be and learning too. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, you actually took vows. You married me. You must love me. I can be vulnerable with you. But a lot of times we don't even act that way in our own families with people that prove that they love us because we got hurt umpteen years ago in these situations and maybe even repeatedly and we haven't fully dealt with it. We just learned how to deal with it, put it in its box and put it away. And then it still keeps creeping up and blocking the very thing that we want with other people. And we're the ones blocking it. <laughs> and we don't even see it. We always, we always, always, always look at the other person. We always defend and go, but you did. And then that, and blah, blah, blah. Right? Uh, so it's a, it's, this is not easy stuff though that I'm talking about y'all. Um, and it takes a lot. <laughs> um, looking in the mirror and really seeing yourself honestly. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's not easy stuff. So there's no wonder that a lot of people choose not to do it. It's much easier. It's much easier to see all the faults in everybody else. Right? Um <sighs> But that's not how you actually heal and get healthy and have good relationships. <laughs> that's not, that's not how. So pay attention to the wisdom of your own nonverbal communication within yourself, with yourself. When something gets triggered and how you're reacting to somebody else, let's go like find the roots of that and replant, replant some things, re you know, rework some things so that we can be like, 
these trees and not that tree. And that tree on the inside, but then trying to look like that tree on the outside, right? Isn't that what we do? We feel like this on the inside and we try to make ourselves look like that on the outside, <laughs> right? That's like kind of nonverbal communication. <laughs> um, and then we, and also not being able to see yourself in the mirror. You're looking and you're like, it's fine. You're the problem. You're the problem. No. You look in the mirror and say, you're the problem. Because you're the only one you can fix and do anything about. Trust me on this. And, and test me on it too. Um, you start to work on yourself and getting your side of the street cleaned up and getting garbage back into your garbage truck and securing that stuff down. I keep wanting to cuss today. It's like, um, secure that stuff and stop spilling it on other people and get more aligned um, and see. It takes a while, you gotta have patience because it takes a while for people to even trust changes in other people. That's why at time, there's no shortcuts to any of this. And I really hate that the world, the word hack gets used everywhere. Like we're gonna hack our way. Like there's just shortcuts to everything. And boy, are we suckers for that. Oh, sure, I wanna hack. I don't wanna work. Give me a shortcut. Um, for a lot of this like true lasting change, to change from the inside out takes um, time, time, time. Practice, practice, practice. That is how you build trust with yourself and with other people. You can't fake fake it till you make it on, on this stuff. Um, okay, I've probably given my voice enough today. Have a great day. Love you guys. Rise and shine.